Hey guys, John here. Today's patch is a little bit different. This is more so an analog template, and this sound was inspired a lot from the Polyvox, the MS-20, Diva, really that kind of older analog-y, gritty dirtiness to it. So with that being said, there's a lot of different randomizations going on, and we're going to talk about all of that, but here's what it sounds like. And here's where it gets cool with the sequencer and some drums. All right, so let's get into this thing here. So first thing to kind of think about when I was creating this patch is anything analog is always gonna be randomness, right? Things are always changing, nothing's really exact. So there's a lot of moving parts with every note that we press. So with that being said, let's go over to this random one here and kind of take a look at that. So this first one's gonna be sample and hold, gonna be sampled from white noise and re-triggered by the poly keyboard. So every time I press a note, look over here and it's gonna create a new value. Now that's very useful because we can use this type of modulation on a lot of different things to really get that analog ish, that chaotic kind of unpredictability within a digital synth. So it made sense to start off with the analog engine because it's analog and not to mention it has this fancy drift feature, this 0 .010 which changes the pitch and phase slightly and stuff like that. So it kind of gives it that analog characteristic to start off with. But we're going to go a little bit deeper with that one. So for the first oscillator here, this is just going to be a sine wave all the way out 100% or 0 dB for this first one. The second one, I always like the sound of an inverted sine wave down one octave. I think that just kind of has a nice tonality to it. And the fine tuning isn't changed manually. This is going to be driven by the random. So we're going to talk all about the different random modulations. Now for the third oscillator, it's going to be also down one octave over on the fine tuning kind of the same thing right so it's not manually changed but we do see the random macro over here changing this slightly now you can see the slightly moving this is going to be a pulse wave or saw wave and the width is going to be modulated by lfo1 so let's take a look at lfo1 here and this is going very slow at 0 0.066 hertz and it's in free free running so it's not restarting every time we hit a note it's just going to continuously move over and over and over back and forth forever And then for unison over here, we have two voices of unison because a little bit too much unison is really going to do too much phase cancellation and it's not really going to get that tightness to it. So really two voices of unison and the detune is quite low at 0.788 and this is also on random and we're going to get to that in just a moment. And then the main engine overall is going to be down one octave. So over here on the filter, so what's going over right here? So basically we have two filters going on. The first one is going to be setting to the second one and they're both on MS-20 because I really like that MS-20 filter. I think it sounds really good. It's kind of similar a little bit to the Polyvox, not exactly the same type obviously, but it has a lot more characteristics that are more in common, I think, to my ear. So with that being said, this first one is basically just the MS-20. We have the cutoff on a macro over here, cutoff LP, which we can go like this to cut off the frequencies. It's kind of already set up over here. And then there's another cutoff for the high pass. So what's happening is the output here is going into the second filter within a high pass. Now, if you are unfamiliar with this process, sometimes we can use a high pass like the MS-20, for example, to get a little bit more low end by cranking this resonance just a little bit to kind of give it that solid low end. And that's what is done here. This resonance knob is kind of set. It's not really supposed to move. It's really kind of there to give a little bump at the end of the filter or the beginning, depending on how you see it. But there is a cutoff right here. So out of the box, it's going to be about 0 0.304 because that's kind of a good middle ground to get the good, solid, rich low end. And we can always move that around as we like to. So about here where we're at, that's about cool right here, 0 0.304. I think that's where we were just at. And then over here, we have the resonance. So this resonance is only going to be controlling this first one here, this low pass 12. So we can kind of crank this and play with the cutoff.
And then for the effects here, I just have a multiband to kind of balance things out a little bit and kind of glue the whole sound together. So now let's get into what this uh, this patch is really made and, or what it's really about and how it sounds the way it sounds. So this random is going to be doing almost all of the work to make it sound the way it sounds. Now, if we select this over here, we can see there's a lot of stuff mapped over here. So this first one here, this envelope VCA attack. So whenever we think about envelopes, they're not really always going to be the same, right? So the attack time is always going to be a little bit different here. So on our attack, it's mainly set up at 7.7 .7 milliseconds, but there's a small amount. So if we close this here and we hover over on, on this attack knob and go to this pie, we can see there's a tiny little sliver. It's not much. It's really only 0 0.03, so it's just a slight inaccuracy every time we hit a note, because remember, every time we press the note, a new random value is going to be generated. Now, anywhere where this lands, this purple little uh, line here, that's where the knob is going to sit at. So, er, so one note might be 7.7 .7 milliseconds, the next note might be 7 milliseconds, and so on and so forth. It's going to produce a different value every single time, and this amount here is kind of the range of what we want to change. So that's one of the first things of randomness that we really want to get in our minds is the envelopes are also random. Now, with that being said, we also are doing that with the release. So standard, the set value of this release is 593 milliseconds. Now with this random one, this is 0 0.05. So it's kind of doing the exact same thing as the attack. And every time we hit a note, the attack and the release times are going to be slightly different. Now, it might be not something that we can specifically point out and really hear per se, but it's something that just adds to the overall character, kind of just the difference of it every single time. Because for all intents and purposes, if this was an actual analog synthesizer, we would set these knobs. There's not going to be a random modulator on like an old analog piece of gear, but that's exactly what the circuitry is doing. It's not going to hit the exact same values every single time as precisely as digital does. So kind of using this concept, we can kind of map this to a lot of different things. So going back into this random one here, the next thing we have right here is envelope release, which we just talked about. And then we have the fine over here. So there's a lot of stuff going on. If we, if we have this open, we can see a lot of the purple rings are what's actually getting changed. So over here, we have the unison detune. So by, uh, by hand, we set it at 0.788%, but we do have a little bit of modulation on that. Same with the fine tuning for oscillator number two, for oscillator number three, and then moving on, if we scroll this over here, we see this is also on the filter one cutoff, which is here, and then the filter one resonance, which is here, the detune, which we already talked about. So basically what's kind of happening is we're kind of looking for different things to target to always change. So we did the envelopes, the cutoff and the resonance are going to be slight different values, 0 0.03. And these are minuscule values, but overall, it's really going to add to that effect to make things just sound chaotic, not the same, unpredictable, but still have that rich low end sound and the nice, brittle, crispy high stuff. And on top of that, this MS-20 filter sounds fantastic and it really kind of adds to this vibe and kind of makes it a little bit more gritty or dirty. So with that being said, once you have this template in front of you, you can always change out the filter if you want something a little bit more smoother or something like that, that's totally cool. And also the effects is kind of left blank here. This main multiband, like I said, is kind of there for glue, but you go ahead and add chorus, delays, reverbs, whatever you want to do to it. But this is kind of a starting point. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the concept behind this type of patch. And they always sound cool with sequencers or arpeggiators behind drums. It just sounds kind of organic and real. Yeah, that's basically this analog template in a nutshell. If you'd like to get it for free, the link is in the video description below, and it can be yours for the price of a click, which is pretty cool. So hopefully you learned something from this video, and we will see you in the next one.